Why is it the deeper you go, the creepier shit gets? Hello my fishes and welcome back to another Mermaid Mysteries episode. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 freakiest fish. Well, not really fish. Actually, are they all fish? They might all be fish. Creatures found in the ocean. Now this is my top 10 list. I went through and I selected my personal top 10 creepiest, freakiest looking creatures. If you have any to add to this list, definitely do so in the comment section down below. It's about to get freaking weird though. No word of a lie what mother nature was thinking in some of these cases. I feel like, mm. Okay, so we're gonna start off with number 10, the mega mouth shark. For me, even though it looks really creepy, and a bit strange, a bit alien, because it's not something that you see very often, is the fact that this shark was not known to exist until 1976 when it was discovered. And for me, it's like, how do you, how do you not spot it? How did we not know about this shark? Like, what the hell else is out there if we didn't know that this thing existed? That for me is kind of what's freaky about it. Number nine, the gulper eel. It's a rarely seen deep sea fish. It's not actually an eel. They're related. I don't think it's actually an eel. Interesting things about it, it has no swim bladder and no pelvic bones. And it has this long like bioluminescent tip on its tail, which is thought to be used to lure fish to their doom. But can we just look at this thing for a second? What in the almighty? What kind of a face? What kind of a... How did this evolve? I would love to know what the thinking was here. Number eight, the stargazer fish. Now this guy, honest to God, I saw this face and it's, it's actually kind of funny to me. It looks kind of funny to me, but it's terrifying. Okay, this thing is electric and venomous. Why would you need to be both? And apparently, according to my research, humans do actually run into these things and actually do get hurt by them. And in some cases even die. Like, it depends on their location, like, where you're- where in the world you are. Yeah, you know what? Could you just imagine? You're just swimming along, you're just minding your business, and, like, you step on one of these things, or you, like, graze it with your hand, and it creates, like, a suction, right? So, like, it's under the sand, and its mouth creates, like, this full-body suction to suck in its prey. I feel like, no. Number seven, the giant isopod. Now, I hear you. I hear you saying, Courtney, that's not freaky. I, honest to God, this thing looks like one of those really big, like, under the microscope bed bug kind of situation where it's just like, it's too big to exist. It's like, what, what are you? What, why? Okay. It's like a pill bug, but like enormous. I feel like it's the color for me. I feel like if they were like a, like a, a darker color, I might not find them quite as creepy, but their little faces and their little antenna is just so damn gross. I can't, I'm not a bug person, no. Number six, the angler fish, which is also our mascot. So friend, that's his name, by the way, his name's friend or friend, if you know him very well. And he's an angler fish. And that was what I designed him after. I guess I am responsible for that design. I love angler fish. I definitely simplified him down quite a bit, but they're so bizarre. So they live beyond the reach of sunlight, right? So they use their own little bioluminescent doodad to attract other fish. And that's how they attract their prey but they're absolutely terrifying in appearance. And I find it really funny because it's like, is it our perception that they're terrifying just because we don't see them all the time or are they genuinely just the stuff of nightmares? Why is it the deeper you go, the creepier shit gets? I would love to know what the thinking is there, you know? Number five, which was actually almost number one, and I, I'm kind of still like 50-50, but the other ones kind of fit in the spaces that they fit. But number five is a goblin shark. If you just need to really be freaked out, you need to just go and just have a look at, at what this thing looks like and how fast its jaws move. According to this one article that I read, you can only actually see its jaws moving in slow motion. Like you have to, if you're gonna like film it, you have to get it in slow-mo. Like it goes so fast that you can't actually see it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm good. Thank you. I'm, I'm, that's fantastic. And thank God that they're kind of a deep water fish. I just don't want to, I just don't want to interact with this guy. And they don't swim super fast, but those jaws, man, they're so bizarre. Like they're on tendons and they like snap out and snap back. I'm good. Thank you. That's it. Number four, the frilled shark. I'm sure you guys all remember actually seeing this one at one point or another in the news. And I thought it kind of looked kind of dumb. I was like, what? 
what what is the deal with this guy what what is it they're actually a lot weirder than you really would actually know just by looking at it so there's about 300 teeth in there across 25 kind of frilled rows of teeth and this utterly outrageous shark can eat things the way that snakes do in that it like disconnects its jaw like it it expands its jaw and can eat things and digest things apparently over half their body size like their whole digestive system just expands so what is this is this a shark is this a snake is this some kind of abomination like combination of the two number three the barrel eye now, I'd like to thank Animal Crossing for being kind of my introduction to this freaky ass fish. What in the all- this thing does not look- I thought it was a joke. So this is obviously a deep sea fish that has evolved these really crazy, like, orb eyes. Like, those two dots on the front of its face are apparently not its actual eyeballs. Its eyes are those two, like, masses on the inside of its transparent forehead. Who has a transparent forehead? What is that? And apparently these eyes can actually like look up or look down. So they're able to see things like above them. It'd be like having eyes on the top of your head. Okay. It's just such a strange adaptation. I mean, everything in the deep sea has like bizarro adaptations. Like what in the world? This one in particular though is just like, what the hell? Number two, the Pacific black dragon. And it is a predator. And they only grow to about two feet in length. Thank God. Could you imagine if they got bigger? <gasps> and they live in the Eastern Pacific Ocean at about 700 to 3,000 feet down. Again, so the chances of running into one of these is slim to none at best. Although I've, I have heard that they have like been seen at the surface. Don't take that for truth though. I don't remember where I read that. But apparently they're super rare. And I gotta say, the face, the face on this thing truly is the stuff of nightmares. Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't understand these adaptations, right? Like these teeth and like how the head and the jaw is like out further and these massive eyes. And they're also bioluminescent. I saw that in, one, in a video uh, that I was looking at to kind of reference for all of this. Okay, and that brings us to number one, which probably makes no sense to anybody. But for me, it's not so much that it, I'd be scared to actually see one of these. I mean, probably because I'd be way too deep to even be existing, so I'd probably be dead. But a deep sea hatchet fish. When I was looking up the freakiest fish and like marine creatures in the ocean, the picture of these guys that came up with these eyeballs, like these massive orb clear, like I kind of feel sick looking at them. I feel like they're coming for my soul. I got nothing. It's just... Bleh. So sound off in the comments. Which one did you find the freakiest? Do you have one that I should have seen or added to the list or I should check out? Do we need a part two? But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe, join the pod, hit the bell, get the notifications, all the things. And otherwise, I look forward to catching you all in my next video. Happy swimming. Bye. Shirt fucking looking great. Amazing. Okay. We're good? We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. I don't- what is this? What's that shit? Okay. A big thank you to the Patreon pod for helping sponsor today's episode. The Patreon pod is your mermaid home away from home with a private Discord community chat, weekly live streams with replays where you can actually watch me make mermaid tales live as well as get exclusive looks at upcoming projects I'm working on and more. Please check out the link in the description box down below.